Now having dealt with the first beast that came out of the sea, the sea of mankind, Imperial Rome, And the darkness and the blackness and the murderous nature and the idolatrous nature and the blasphemous nature and all the wickedness of the nature of that beast where the devil had set up his throne in the earth. Centralised his power and authority which was exercised through human beings and human and that human institution. All right, we come to a second beast. Verse 11 of Revelation chapter 13. <clears throat> John says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns, like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Oh, perfect. Perfect, isn't it? Hmm? A charlatan. A charlatan. That's all he is. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth this time. From the earthy side of the sea of mankind. And when we talk, well the scriptures talk about the earth earthy side of mankind it's the depravity of mankind that cannot be separated from the secular side of the world they both go together this one is pretending to be religious, to be sacred, when in fact it is secular, satanic secularism. It's coming in as a lamb, harmless, <coughs> inoffensive, just like the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, of the elect people of God, not the physical world you can't take away a f the sins of a physical world because sins are within a different realm even as the world is now beyond another beast coming up out of the sea sorry out of the earth and he had two horns ah he had two horns <laughs> war in this two horns like a lamb like a lamb, not a lamb, like a lamb. Let us get to the very point here. This is what? The Church of Rome. All right? This beast follows on from the first beast. What other two beasts, what other two beasts existed at the same time in history was that one was brought from the other. Eh? Well, it's Papal Rome. Papal Rome was created out of Imperial Rome. The earthy side of Imperial Rome. Rome to be the national religion of Imperial Rome and Imperial Rome found it to be a thorn in the side vexatious just like the Jews and this is why the Church of Rome as it started to grow and feel and get its feet within Imperial Rome, okay, Papal Rome began to get haughty, arrogant, show its dark side. And it ended up being persecuted. A lot of its people being thrown 
to the lions, as it were, in the arenas. And of course, papal Rome turned round and said, all oh, the saints, say, hey, the Christians, were being slaughtered. No, true Christians were being slaughtered. But your lot were not true Christians. And if you think that is a nasty business, you take the fact that because they're taking on true children of God and making out theirs are the true children of God, they even stole from the Christians the word Catholic. They were never known as Roman Catholics. It was the Roman Church. And the Pope put in, I believe it was the Act of Thessalonica, yeah, it was the Act of Thessalonica, to add to the papal name, all right, Universal, Catholic, the term Catholic, and any person, any Christian that calls the Church of Rome Catholic is obeying the pagan Pope and the edicts of the Pope of Thessalonica. It is the Roman Church created by Rome, Imperial Rome, for its own setup to have a sacred side so called. Just as you have the Farages, if you like, setups. You have an opposition, the government wants an opposition. Or business wants an opposition. They must have an opposition. That's how it is. It's just how it is. That's how the world is. Okay? Papal Rome is simply Romanism. The papacy. It is never to be attached to the term Catholic. And it's Roman because that defines itself never changing to be the Imperial Roman Church and the Imperial Roman setup was of the devil pure evil and what does the devil create hmm what can he not fail to create but another expression of himself in a devilish religion that seeks to pass itself off as Christian. Here it is, as a lamb. But he spake as a dragon. Of course he spake as a dragon. This second beast would speak as a dragon. Popery speaks as a dragon and seeks to pass itself off as Christian. As Christian. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. So the first beast was standing. Still standing. Because this is the church of Rome for imperial Rome. All right. And he exercised of all the power of the first beast. It is clear as day that the two here exist, one in front of the other. And of course, it being demonic, Romanism demonic, created by the chief of demons, would speak as a dragon and would exercise the f power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast 
You see, again it's telling us, the scriptures are telling us to worship the first beast. The beast over there. The beast that I represent, says Romanism. Worship it. Whilst at the same time, this beast was contending against the first beast. So much so that Constantine had had enough. And took his power from Rome. And went to Turkey. And of course, history tells it all from there. To have Constantinople reflect Constantine and his setup in the East. And his deadly was to dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. His deadly wound was healed. We've had that before whereby it was attacked and it recovered and stood still, didn't it? And he doeth great wonders, verse 13, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Is that literal fire? No. This again is an example of popery. The priest will say before the congregation, that man over there is a heretic and the people fear and they quake. Oh, oh, the judgment of God is going to come down. Oh, Father. And they cry out, Father. He's, as though he's a begging father. He's got no children. Well, not supposed to have any children. And they cry out and they're worshipping this man and they're worshipping the beast. And they believe that this man has the power before them to rain down Judgment from heaven, the fiery anger of God, and in their minds, in their understanding, Joe Bloggs down here, having so-called committed heresy, is under the judgment of God, and God is dealing with him, and if he's not dealing with him now, he will deal with him soon. And it's all racing under the, through their understanding, and they can literally picture this, and they are benighted. The congregation is a benighted congregation to the beast of Romanism. And they're believing everything that the priest is saying. That it's going to happen, that the priest has the power to bring judgment. Not literal fire, but judgment. For the wrath of God is revealed to... What? From heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. Is it coming down in fire? Is fire raining down? No. It is fiery condemnation. And it's the same here because we're in a spiritual realm. It's not a physical fire. It's a spiritual fire of the wrath of God. Of which the priest says I own. I control God, I control heaven, I can call down the wrath of God upon this person and the people believe it and they shun the person because they are afraid that God will be angry with them if they do not shun that person. And it's the same with neo-evangelicalism, when neo-evangelicalism says, Oh, how many souls have you saved? And we say, None. Oh, God will be angry with you. In the great day, he will be angry with you for not saving souls. And he's angry with you now for not saving souls and going out and saving souls. It's popery. It's popery. We're the beloved of God. We are loved of God. We are the apple of the eye of God. God works in and through us to be the better people. And Christ has won every soul. And God has won every soul. And the Holy Spirit has won every soul. Before the world began. That's why we're all in the book of life. Untouched by man. But touched by the Almighty. He touched us. He planted us as lively thoughts in his book. 
his mind. We're touched by God and continue to be touched by God. And it doesn't matter what the priest of Rome says. It doesn't matter what a neo-evangelical says. If we spoke the truth, we've spoken the truth. And they can't do anything about it. Let them get angry. Let them get upset. Let them call fire down from heaven. Oh, God will judge you. God will judge you. Oh, will judge you. Yeah, carry on. Just carry on because you're under the judgment of God. It's you under the judgment of God. And he do a great wonder that he make a fire, you see. It's a zoo. It's already happened. He make a fire come down from heaven. In the minds of the people it is so. It is so. That fire, the anger of God is laid upon that person. Oh, don't touch him, dear. Don't touch him. He's under the wrath. Condemnation of God, according to my priest. Yeah, according to your priest. 14, verse 14. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. In the sight of the beast. False miracles. False miracles. I'm reminded of Deuteronomy 13. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 13. Okay, because all things remain the same. It doesn't matter if it's the Old Testament, New Testament, or whatever. They remain exactly the same. There were false prophets in the old days and false teachers, and so there shall be and are today and the days previous to us being upon earth. All right? Since the time of the cross, nothing alters. Nothing whatsoever. Now verse 13 of Deuteronomy. Sorry, chapter 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder Come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Hmm? And ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. You see all these false prophets and teachers, they come and they show a miracle. It's not a divine miracle. They make out it is a divine miracle. Who oh, is taken in tongues, always oh, healed him, who oh, is brought fire down on him. Bloody blah blah blah. The all false prophets with false miracles and false teachers with false miracles and the people are so easily beguiled. So easily beguiled. And he did it in front of the first beast. And the first beast being present Imperial Rome. All right, we're taken in as well, naturally. And approved of their religion, okay, their central religion, Romanism. Because they looked at it and said, well, why miracles? They must have something about them, an authority about them. They're just not an ordinary religious body. They're greater than the Jews over here. Alright? And greater than the rest of the religious bodies surrounding Imperial Rome and in the world. Alright? And we still have it today. 
don't we? Saying that there are a multitude of false religions, deceptive religions with their false miracles, and we, the children of God, have the real power of God and stand in the midst of it all. Stand in the midst of it all. New evangelicalism, or the new evangelicalism, that will not have any, anything to do with the term Protestant or Reform and Reformation, okay, is the greatest deceiver of them all within religious circles. Outside of it, of course, there are corrupt parliaments and corrupt institutions. Hmm? And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. Oh, they're all deceived. People are deceived even today by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And you know, when you look at the Americans particularly, they say, oh, isn't he a wonderful man? Isn't he? He's healed that man. Hey, oh, he needs no more crutches. Oh, he was dying, he's healed him. And so on and so on and so forth. Now, the point being is that these are entertainers. They've got the nice, expensive suits on, manicures, all the rest of it. Smooth talkers. The persons that they heal are the actors that they are. They come in on crutches, but didn't need crutches. It's like Amy Semple McPherson, an American uh, preacher of the 1800s, war 